so the Egmont Overture by Beethoven, the classic overture. One of the best things you could do just in general for every excerpt you're studying is listen to it in its original context. I also think um, when you listen to the recordings, 172 is maybe a touch on the fast side. Also for practicing, I don't really like it on the quarter note um, all the time. It's good to practice it sometimes like that, um, but it's also good to put the metronome on different um, beats or basically just put it on the bar. So uh, 172 divided by 3 is about 57 or something like that. Um, <laughs> off the top of my head. Uh, so I'm just going to put it down like that and I'm gonna put it down up to like 57. Mine only goes to 56, right? One. So that's, I just did something that I say in my head I think is very helpful is because you can get a little turned around of where the beat is, is after you play this sforzando, one, in your head, say one, one, um, just so you're like one, you can count the beats, two, three, and a, da, a, one, just so, because you could, you could get like spin around in your, spun around in your head, and then life is confusing. The other thing um, is <laughs> when we get started here, look behind that red bracket, you'll see that we're, we're we start in pianissimo. This is a really kind of mysterious part of the overture. We've just finished this. What's gonna happen? Um, and so try not to accelerate, although that's the temptation. Actually throughout this whole excerpt, the, ten the temptation is to, to rush forward or to speed ahead. There's lots of little uh, temptations of like descending scales where you just want to go da -de -da, dun, 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 dun. and so don't get faster try to um, have a little bit of restraint one of the things this excerpt is testing is all the different bow strokes and uh, kind of to get into it around 42 this is a this is the first sort of landmine of this excerpt is getting to this off the string stroke we end with we're ending kind of way down here, so it's really difficult to get back to a bouncing point. All this really is is just a very short, I start on the string. I know everybody uh, is gonna say that to you. That's one of the big principles of orchestral playing is start from the string and you just sort of Sort of pop and then you let the bow bounce from there okay so that's one of the big strokes throughout this whole passage um, is really don't don't use a whole lot of bows just it's just like that much bow I also would recommend save the crescendo kind of as a little bit later than it's printed Everybody kind of starts pushing this thing, and then it just gets like too chaotic. Um, and especially by yourself, just sort of save it. It's gonna, you're gonna kind of naturally crescendo it. I mean, it builds an energy, but I would save it just a little bit, you know, push it like a good eight bars later. Um, kind of around this open string. It's harder to play. It's hard to play these last four B B flats all differently. So you want to you want to have you know gas in your tank to get to this last big crescendo. All right. So that's sort of the first stroke is this off the and then when we get to A, this is a different stroke. Hmm. Where did we see this? did we see that before? Yeah, uh, this is the same 
Bostrop from Kreutzer 7. Um, Matthew Davis has a plan for your life, apparently. Uh, he's very, very smart in, in uh, asking for uh, that etude and then having to play it here. And you have to do it at the tip because just for bow distribution sakes, we have a long way to go. This is an interesting one. Um, in an orchestral playing, I would probably play open string. Like everybody's like guns are blazing at this point. Like the whole orchestra is just cranked all the way up. So an open E string it probably isn't going to make that much big of a difference. But by yourself in the audition, it pops a little bit. It sounds a little awkward, especially you don't have any vibrato there. So I would probably play a fourth finger there, but make sure then that you get that D flat. really low. D flat's really got to be low. Okay, um, and then we're back to that same stroke. These quarter notes can be a little bit longer. Don't play. They can be. Ah, sorry. And then these are long, 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 long. Um, those ones really have some length to them. And then we're back again. And then same thing. I know that's a goofy fingering to get to that high E flat. Basically, I want, I know that I want to be in fourth position. So, you know, however you have to get there, if you want to go three, three, four instead or something, you know, uh, you can do any fingering choice you want. I have mine that you can download um, as the same things that you see on the screen here. Um, whatever you do, mar mark it in your parts so that you don't forget, okay? Um, um, when you get to these, um, the tendency is to kind of crunch these uh, half no these eighth notes, excuse me, to crunch these and compress these eighth notes and then the, the thing kind of, the whole, the sequence kind of just speeds up and gets too fast. So really try to really spread apart those eighth notes. Don't play. That's just blah, 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 blah. We don't really hear those unless you go, you play. Dee da da, dee da da. Those are, those are important notes. All right, um, fun. The B is like the best part of this whole this whole thing. Um, and I do recommend this bowing. This is what everybody does. Um, these aren't short. You really have to give it some length. And fortissimo. Beethoven didn't write anything louder than fortissimo, did he? I don't know. I don't know if I can verify that, but basically this is this is all the way. And then in your head, I hope you can hear this clarinet and oboe line where it goes. Now this is um again a little bit. Uh, everybody's gonna have a, maybe a different opinion here. I think waiting all these, what is it, one, two, three, four, five, I think holding these five measures, just counting them in your head is a little long. And so when I demonstrated it, you know, I cut it a little short. I probably go, I probably hear in my head, oh, it's six, I think, yeah, two, three, I, I, so I probably am only gonna count four measures in my head, just enough that I can kind of reestablish my rhythm in my head. So I'm thinking And that's again this is an off the string stroke. This is tricky you're going to get it's it's hard to you know keep your bow straight and which beat you're on. Um so do play some pay some attention there. After the triplets uh, the tendency is to play these eighth notes at the same tempo as the triplets. And 
you know, they are slower. So really resist that temptation again, pull it back. We don't want to go and, and, you know, speed up as we're going. So just try to And then here, we're at the mountaintop. We've made it, all right? Um, really try to lift on these quarter notes. Because we want to, obviously, stress the sforzando note and not the quarter note. And sometimes, um, to make these sforzandos or accents happen, it's just, it's, sometimes it's more important that we don't accent the other notes. So you could think of it as no accent, no accent, you know. Um, and then just a nice, uh, you can probably play those two. I do not play all three notes. Um, ain't nobody got time for that. One of the best recommendations I can say for the whole audition process in general is make sure that you practice playing this, playing your whole you know, repertoire in front of people before the audition. The biggest mistake you could have is to go into the audition and have that be the first time that you ever play in front of people. Because you need to sort of feel what it's gonna feel like to have the eyes watching you and you get nervous and what happens because everybody reacts a little differently under the stress of nerves. And so Get your, get your parents, your siblings, whatever, sit them down and be like, okay, I need you for five minutes to listen to these and play through everything, no stopping. You don't have to, you know, they don't have to give you comments. They don't have to say, yeah, I think you were a little pitchy. And that made it. Like, you don't have to necessarily um, get comments. Another great thing is if you don't, um, you know, if you don't have family around or people that will do that, um, Record yourself. You could also just, you know, set up your stuffed animals or something uh, just to have that like, oh, I'm in a performance setting just to give you that extra experience. Um, and that's that really like 90% of the people won't do that. 90% of the people will just like practice in the room and then go for it on and on stage. And um, it's it's a it's a whole nother world performing it, you know, especially if you've never played it through start to finish without you know, stopping. So uh, that's my, my just dynamite million dollar tip right there. Uh, it, it'll do wonders. Well, thanks so much for watching us. I hope this was really helpful. Uh, leave any comments or questions for you that you have in the comment section here on YouTube and uh, I'll answer them as best as I can. I hope uh, you do well, be well, and practice well. Bye, 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 bye,